Hi guys, uh, this is Eric, and today we're going to use GIMP to make a 125 by 125 advertising web banner. Let's get to it. All right, the first thing we want to do is we want to go and create a new document, and we want to set it. Uh, let's set it at since our uh, it's 125 by 125. If we set it at 1300. By 1300 that will be able to give us space to create an image that's uh, 10 times just a little bit over 10 times as big as what the resulting image needs to be why we need to do that is um, so that we can have good resolution on the low level or if we decide to edit it uh, we won't get jaggies and stuff like that in fonts um, when we scale up. Okay, so here we go. All right, so here's our square. Now I'm going to go, um, let's, the next thing I want to do is we want to find, I guess, your, your font colors and your theme and all this kind of stuff. So you want to find the colors that you're going to end up using and you want uh, to know what fonts you're going to end up using. So fortunately, uh, for my project here, I'm going to make a banner for my company, Eric Hepperly Designs. Now, um, let's see. Well, about a week ago, it looks like a little bit less maybe, um, I designed this banner for my YouTube uh, website that I just made. Uh, I created this design from scratch from a, you know, following a tutorial, and I created this design from scratch also based on a YouTube tutorial that I saw and uh, YouTube tutorials are amazing as you guys know otherwise you wouldn't be watching this but yeah so I created all this from scratch none of this is anybody else's content and so I'm going to use this um, but what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to open because I saved my document where I created it in GIMP, and that will let me be able to easily see what the fonts are. For future reference, it might be a good idea to make a note of what fonts, font sizes, and this kind of stuff. Essentially, a mini style guide for your design. But so let's go here. I'm going to find Eric Hepperly Designs right there. And then if I click on the alpha and click in there I'll go ahead and say yes create new layer and then when I click it should tell me what that is but it isn't that's weird all right let's try duplicating it see what that does yeah let's duplicate there we go. Okay, so Eris Bold ITC, and the font size is uh, 103. So I'm actually just going to go over and use free, uh, free program called Notepad++. And I'm on Windows, and you know if you're on Mac, you've got text edit and different things like that. Uh, but just a basic text editor, and then I'll make a note: Eris Bold ITC 103. And then I'm also going to grab the color that I'm using there. So we'll get the hex value. So I'll come over to here. And of course, hex values always have a pound sign in front of it. But when you grab the color in GIMP, it won't have the pound sign. So just be aware of that. You can click this, and that will let you get other colors. But that's not what we want. We want to know what this color is here. So I'm going to go to Cancel. And... I'm actually going to control Z a bunch of times to remove those extra layers that we had to create to see what the font was. Now we won't need to do that create extra layer thing again. That was basically sort of a workaround that GIMP gave us. And we've got the font information documented. Now let's see what colors we're working with with the background. Okay. So we'll go in here. I'll take a color grabber. I'll take the color here. Okay. And then over here I'm just going to make a note that this is a 
This is orange. Sort of maybe dark orange. And then we'll go ahead and grab this color here. We're going to get the ones at the beginning and at the end because that'll get rid of all the variants in the middle and get truest to the, the actual colors that were used to make that gradient. Okay, so we'll call this uh, lemon yellow. Just for, uh, just for ease of use real quick. Okay, so we'll cancel out of there. And we'll come back over here. Now, what I'm going to do is something a little different. We're, we're going to try to make that same gradient. So, so we'll go here. And so we're going to, this is represents the forward color, the, the, the foreground color. That's that dark orange. So we'll come here and we'll grab that, uh, that yellow. Fortunately, it stored that for us. We'll click OK, and now we've got that lemon yellow as the background, or school bus yellow, however you want to call it, and the dark orange as the front, and the gradient is already set. Uh, but what you want, if your resist doesn't look like this, is you want to make it foreground to background RGB. Okay? So then we got linear. Actually, let's see. If you click that, it doesn't change anything in here. It's weird. You actually have to, like delete out and then it gives you other options. So there's a little tip that uh, I actually haven't seen anywhere else. So um, hopefully that's valuable to you. And you can choose which one of these you want. So I want this one right here, foreground to background. And let's try that again. To background RGB. Well, it's already in there. And we'll go here. And linear is what we want, so everything else looks good. Um, I don't know about dithering. I'm not that much of an expert just yet, but uh, I'm learning as I teach. I'm teaching what I know, and in that way, we'll both get better. Okay, so then we make sure that we're up here. See, that we got the paint bucket here. That's the fill tool. And then right here is the blend tool, and that's how we're going to be able to make our gradients. So we just click here and then drag a little bit. And see what we get. Well, that looks good to me, except for that the yellow's on top and we need to have them the other way. So I'll click that. I'll just do that to undo. And we'll try it again. Perfect. Now notice, I'll control Z to undo it again. Now notice if I uh, drag it at an angle, it's going to, you know, make an angular gradient. That's not what we want. So let's make sure we maybe click on Shift. Click it, click on shift, and then go down. No, that's not working. But I do like that gradient right there. That's pretty good. So we'll keep it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it. And let's see. My naming, I usually do EH for my initials so I know that this was a document that I created. Designs, that's something that I designed. Um, if I edit something, I'll put EH edit. So if it's somebody else's stuff and I'm making it into a derivative... Uh, image or something. That's how I'll do that. And then I put the date um, 2018. So I always put the year first, then uh, numerically uh, 04, and then this is the 30th of April. So there you go. So that way all the dates will line up when I'm sorting them. It makes it really easy to organize. And then I just put a description of what it is. So uh, let's see. It's company... We'll say it's an advertisement. Okay. Advert banner 125. And I don't I won't do 125 by 125 because I'll just know that by my let's put 125 picks. And then we'll put for Eric Hepperly designs. And then what I'll do is I'll put a 01. And I almost forgot to tell you another important part for your organization you always want to create a folder because if you make different revisions of the image that you're trying to get which you will if you're a good designer um, 
you need them to be in the same folder so you don't have to go hunt them down later. So what I do is I name the folder uh, the same as the file name except without the 01 on the end and stuff. And you'll see how I use the 01 in a minute, but basically it's just for versioning. And what I've actually started doing is 01.00. I find that works best for me. And avoids a lot of renaming having you know that you might have to do otherwise and stuff. All right, so now we're going to come in. We're going to create some text. And as you know, in GIMP, when you create text, it automatically puts the text on a different layer. So I'm going to go where it says sans. Actually, let's do it this way. I'll go over here and I'll do uh, Eris ITC. Click on here and see if I can bring that up. Air, Aris Bold ITC. There you go. Okay, and let's say 130 like we did before. And we've got anti-aliasing on. That's good. That's what we want. Currently, uh, the text is centered within. So when I do like this, the text is going to center itself in this selection, this rectangular selection. So. Let's start typing to see what we get. Okay, so we're that color. We don't want it that color. Let's change that to this purple that stored that. And there we go. So now we'll do Eric Hepperly Designs. See, that's a gotcha. <laughs> that's a gotcha with, uh, with GIMP is you change a color and then it changes itself back. So you got to just highlight it. And there, now don't edit it again. If you edit it again, it will change itself again. Of course, we want to go in here and we want to take it from fixed and make it dynamic. Um, just temporarily so that we can, let's, let's do cancel. Let's save our document. Okay. And I'm actually going to put an enter in there. There we go. Remove that space and now it's centered. That's pretty good. I like that. Let's uh, let's make it a little bit bigger. Maybe 150, and hit enter. Good. All right. Now I'm going to center it in the document. That's how we're going to do that. Okay. Let's see where we're at on time. All right. We'll center it in the document by using the alignment tool. So the alignment tool works really good. Um, one easy way, you can do first item, but what I find is a, is a good way, because sometimes uh, if you have multiple levels, it's hard to, to click or even pick the first item. Uh, do active layer, then click on the background as the active layer. All right, so I've got the background clicked. And then click on a, you know, a good colored part of the of the text and then it will highlight that and then all you do is you click this one right here it says align center of target boom and then if you want it right in the middle which I wouldn't recommend for this type of design you put that right there but all right so now I want to go back and grab one image let me grab that one control C to copy it control V to paste it I'll do a to new layer See, I picked the wrong thing. Look at that. Control Z, undo it. Come back, try this again. Circuit. Okay, let's try that. Control, control C. Let's see if that works. Control V. Excellent. Control A. Oh, control. Loading selection to new layer. Cool. Now I'm going to go in here. I'm just going to. Okay, make sure you do move the active layer. I'm going to move that out of the way a little bit. And then I'm just going to put a little drop shadow on it. Filters. All right, let's go light and shadow. And I'll just click drop shadow. And I'll just accept the default. Say control S. And now we need to export our document. So we'll export as. And then. What I usually do is uh, I make that 0101. 
and say export. I'm just okay. Now that we've got our image saved, we want to go to where we have it at and just double check that it looks good. And see, this is the the normal minimized mode for for Windows. So just at that small level, looks pretty good. I can see it has my name and it has designs and the company's there. Now I might want to put a drop shadow and a couple other images to balance it out right there. But for the purpose of this uh, tutorial, we'll call it good. We'll just double click it, make sure it's so so even big. It it looks really good. There's no jaggies or anything around the the text. The last thing to do is to go ahead and what I like to do we'll close out of that and we'll close out of this one and then we will go and we will open let's not right click and edit with GIMP and so we're going to take the actual image open it and then so we don't end up uh, destroying or or corrupting the image that we saved we'll do control a to select all and then control C to copy we'll go file and then we'll go uh, create and then from clipboard then we'll close out you see up here it has the actual name that means that's the actual image if we started doing something on that saved it it would destroy it would write over the image that we had before and we wouldn't be able to get back to that so I want to close that out yep discard changes and then what I'll do is I'll take and I'll do a save as and see this here this uh, original XCF file so I'll take this and I'll make this 2 because we're starting with a whole new starting point it doesn't have all the the layers and stuff that the last one did so we'll put save save my cat is going crazy over here scratching stuff um, all right and then the easy part here is we just go to uh, image and we go auto well auto. take the don't do the auto crop that's bad uh, you want